So we've just watched Why Wouldn't I Be? And we have Ella Greenwood with us. Thank you for sharing your film with us. And uh, can you tell us what made you embark on this project? Yes. Um, so, this slightly more close to me. Uh, I focus on mental health with a lot of my work. Uh, before this, I've done various different shorts, did ones um, about mainly female characters and ones to introduce young people to mental health and different aspects. Um, and then I met the founder of Human and loved everything that they do and really wanted to um, try and tailor a short to, to help support them and also just through them I found out that 75% of suicides um, are by males, which I, I hadn't realised that before, that's not something that I knew when I found that out. Just a mixture of all those factors, I really wanted to do a short in support of human and um, about male mental health. That's cool. And how did you look at casting the project? We worked with a casting director. Wow. Um, I've worked with her on all of my projects now, um, her name's Frankie Fierce and she's amazing. And yeah, I guess I never, like with any with all the characters, I never have anyone in mind or anything specific. It's mainly just kind of the rough age and, and that's about it. So she then sends over those suggestions. Um, and the friend character is played by an amazing actor called Tut and he, for example, self-taped. And yeah, it's always hard. But I love the actors. I think they did an incredible job and they're such lovely people. So it was a really great shoot. And how long did it take you to shoot them? Only two days. We were, it was, well, because I also produced, so I run Broken Flames, which um, produced the film alongside our amazing exec producer, Lucas A. Ferrara. Um, so I kind of also sometimes have the producer mindset and I was just like, how can I make this film really simply? So it was all set in the same house, um, try to, keep minimal characters, that sort of thing. So yeah, it was two days and quite a simple shoot. It, it went well and it ran on time, so yeah. And uh, we see more and more films focusing on mental health. Why do you think it's so important to get it? I mean, obviously we know why it's so important, but um, what, message, what, what are the most important messages that we can get out through the, the, the the, the platform of film in regards to mental health? There are so many. I think you can say pretty much everything with film um, in different aspects, but like one of the things with this that I really wanted to encourage is just how important it is to respond to people and to, to just have conversations and talk about your mental health and, and reach out to people when you are struggling. Um, because it sounds easy, but it really never is. So. Yeah, I think film, the more you see it, the more you think it, it's doable for yourself. And did you find, how, how did you find the project as a whole? Was it, was it quite easy to kind of piece together once you had the location? You know, was there much time for working on the scenes, etc.? Because obviously you're trying to create the impact, so I think you've achieved that, but it, it doesn't always come easily, does it? No, um, yeah, I think a lot of things, it's just once we found the location, then we were, we were literally set that it was very nice and very easy, um, and I got to work with the actors a lot, we had a lot of time to prepare, um, and I guess it's, I never have such set things in mind, I'm really open to scripts developing, um, and like with this, the orders can completely changed in the edit, all the scenes were different ways, except for the start and the end, that stayed the same, but all the scenes in the middle completely just changed around in the edit, we cut quite a lot of scenes that we also shot, so yeah, it's just kind of not holding on to anything too much and, and going with it. Coming slightly off the topic of film, as a filmmaker, if you were stranded on a desert island, what five films would you have with you? Oh my god, five films, that's a lot. Um, my favourite film is Inside Out, the Pixar one. Okay. Um, I love Hush, the horror, and then I love Eighth Grade, and then I love a rom-com, Ten Things I Hate About You, and then last, maybe another Disney, because I just love Disney, probably Big Hero 6, so kind of, yeah, I feel like I've got a good genre.
yeah. um, of each in there. But those are just my favourite films. Nice, I watch them again and again. Nice mix. So we got some questions out there for Ella. Thank you so much for the film, first of all. It's really important subject matter. And uh, yeah, I think film is one of the best mediums to get that out with. Um, how do you raise your funds? You don't have to tell us the budget, obviously, if you don't want to. But uh, how do you raise funds for your films? Um, so it's a mixture of crowdfunding, as always. Um, I've crowdfunded for a lot of shorts. Some have been half crowdfunded, half private investment. Um, this one, I was lucky where someone that I'd met through um, through crowdfunding had invested in one of my other shorts and we then just got talking and wanted to continue that relationship. So yeah, the, the producer, Lucas A. Ferrara, um, produced this with us. Um, working on such a difficult topic and theme, was there any way you or the actors had to sort of get out of it to, to then you know, not take any of this home? Yeah, I mean, it's really important that the mental well-being of cast and crew is protected when making a film about mental health because that would just be completely ridiculous if it wasn't. Um, so it's just really talking through with, with like, for example, the lead actor, um, Harry Collette, who is so talented, making sure that he he's comfortable and, and can separate himself with the character and also just talking about what the character is going through in as much detail as possible and, I mean, with all of my films, I never want to end any of them on a, a kind of negative way. I always want them to end in a positive way. So showing that this character in this journey that also the actor's been on with them and that there can be positive endings. Hi, can you hear me all right? Um, slightly distracted, maybe a bit off topic, but um, apart from the sound on the film, we're talking too close, apart from the sound on the film, when it comes to the music, on the film, um, when you make stuff online or something, you get what they call offline, uh, royalty free and all this sort of stuff. How do you deal with it in the intermediate phase? Because at the top end, you're not Baron Gallows making Conquest of Paradise, obviously, which is a different ball game altogether. But how do you deal with the music and paying for it and royalties and everything? Like this shot here today where you played it today, do you have to pay the person that played the music for it? How does all that work? Can you give us an insight on that? Please yeah, um, so again, I've been really fortunate that from the start when I started filming, I've just worked with incredible people. So um, I've worked with the same composer with, with all of my films. Her name's Gabby Ambler and she's incredible. She composed this so she it's her own work and it's the score um, and so we you know she retains the copyright and stuff like that but then the rights for this score because they're tailor made for this film or with the scores uh, or with the film so it's just it, it goes with the film and we can and share so it. So they get a cut of what it makes in the cinemas or how do they contract it? Uh, oh, sorry to catch that. If, they, uh, if when the thing is shown in the cinemas that I get a cut of the percentage of the, the income, uh, like a royalty, or do you have to pay them up front for the work that they do? I mean, we heard yesterday they were talking about having to pay people £600 a day and this sort of thing. One of the gentlemen was saying that he had to let people go for the time being because of the complex situation of COVID, the money was not there yet, and he got it, but it wasn't there yet. We had to pay them later and all this sort of stuff. How do you deal with all that and, and paying the composers and whatever? How much do they charge? Do they charge you by the day? Do they charge you? How much do they charge for doing the score for, I don't know, a 10 minute film, an hour film, what? Uh, I mean, all composers differ. Mm -hmm. um, some charge per minute, some charge per the amount of time that they put in. So compared to per minute of the film. How much and, are they charging day, like an hotel? Uh, it, it, it will it, really it, depend on, yeah, on the I composer. Mean, it, it would vary from um, from film to film, um, mm. but in with the greatest respect, I think in a lot yeah. of the independent cinema, mm. you generally you strike the deal from the offset, this is what I'm going to give you, this is what I've got, unless it's a favour, which happens a lot, mm. and then that's just, that's the end of it. Uh, when you're talking to about some sort of Hollywood blockbuster, then they might charge you by the minute and then they will 
collect some nice royalties every time the film is played, depends if their contract has that. I imagine that people like Hans Zimmer get a healthy uh, cut of money every time their film is shown somewhere. Um, but I think, I think it's fair to say that the deal that you strike, however you strike that deal in independent cinema is generally the deal, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, I guess it's, it's different in how the film goes. It's, it's very rare for short films to be sold or distributed. Um, festival circuit's different. It's not like you're selling it to a cinema so or anything like that. it's a two or three day film, such as you've made, such as we're seeing the, the, this week, if that's the right question, Spencer, because I'm learning mm -hmm. as I go with the great effect. How much would you pay someone to write a score for a, what, 15 minute film, half an hour film, that took three days to shoot? Is that the right question? It, it depends on the composer, and you would do it by, so for example, this film, it's 16 minutes, 17 minutes, and then there's not 17 minutes of score, there's probably about four minutes of score. Mm -hmm. um, so then it just, Depends how much score you want in the film, and it depends on the on the composer's rate. Each each composer's different. Um. In uh, twenty fourteen, I made a film with a mutual friend, and um, the composer for that film literally needed the experience mm -hmm. of making a score for a film, yeah. and we so, agreed yeah. on a fee of six hundred pounds for the entire film, yeah. and he actually scored. For my six hundred pounds, he scored a hundred percent of my film. Oh wow! Um, so, but I think it depends where you are in the in the food chain, so yeah. to speak, yeah. when it comes to uh, composing. I bet he wouldn't do it now for six hundred pounds, <laughs> but uh, back then he definitely did. Mm. Uh, well, I, know, I know what you're saying. It's an interesting topic, though, because actors do the same thing. Sylvester Stallone, when he was finally signed up by MGM, or whatever it was, I forget now, for the, the first Rambo film, they paid him 65000 he didn't give a monkey down if he got. He wanted to be the star of that film, and it led to all the, the, the literally billion dollar industries that have followed from it. Um, good luck to him as well. Uh, um, got another question here. Can oh, we sorry. move on to this one here? Yes, sorry. Um, just going on to the, kind of like the last question, have you got any plans to use the film maybe to help mental health charities or anything like that? Because I think it'd be perfect for, you know, young people in particular. Yeah, um, so with, with Human, we've, we've already done stuff, some stuff already and we want to expand that. Um, we've, for example, taken it to, to head offices and we were approached by different companies. Um, so took it to their staff members, mainly for either Mental Health Awareness Week or, or day or just something that the company wanted to do. Um, so we'd pair that with this in a mental health panel and just, um, yeah, there's lots of different ways that we want to continue that because that's so far been for adults. So we'd love to really work on, on teenagers and, and young people and, and sharing it with them. Lovely. And what are you working on next? Next, um, we've just finished a few more shorts, uh, 54 Days, Been Back For One, Maywood Road, um, Better Get Better with Alicia. Uh, so getting those out there and sharing with festivals. Um, we're developing my first ever short into a feature film and I've been doing that for a while. Um, and we're also getting ready to shoot Proof of Concept for a feature um, in June. And we also, at Broken Flames, we have a film fund, so writers can submit scripts and they're shared with an industry panel and then the, the winning one gets financed and produced. So we're currently reading loads of submissions and then we will um, narrow it down to, to the shortlist. So. That's really cool. Well done. Big round of applause for Ella. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.